All right, there we go. So, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to some impromptu Q and A. Uh, this is not planned at all. Um, but I finished up with Cyberpunk early, and what I need to do now is that correct? That is correct. There it is. What I need to do is uh, just hang out with you guys. I'm gonna hang out and do some live Q and A with people on the stream, uh, just to kill some time until the uh, stream would normally end. So I've got about 35 minutes or so, roughly. Okay. So what's going on? What does everyone want to talk about? Ford Camaro, I can't say if Cyberpunk's more disappointing than Fallout 76 because I never played Fallout 76 at launch. I played it many months later. It still sucked, but I didn't play it at length, so I can't give you any kind of an opinion on that. Yeah, I would agree. Snakefish Gaming says, what about how about how Outer Worlds did their game where the quest lines were split up into categories? Side quest, main quest, companion quest. Yes, that would have been a great thing for Cyberpunk. Cyberpunk made absolutely no effort to actually, like, sort half of the quests in the game. Yes, the gigs are separated and the, the vehicle quests are separated, but all the other side quests are crammed together and you've got, like, ten different kinds of quests, most of which are garbage, and it was a major flaw of the game. <clears throat> What's the best bug I encountered out of all of them? Oh, man, there were so many. Remember the one where I was inside of a character and you could see, like, the inside of their face? That was disgusting. That happened twice, too. Um, or remember when I was in the tank and all of a sudden I stood and T-posed out of the tank like this and I saw my ass, basically V's ass was in the camera's face so it looked like you were getting like, you were eating his butt. Um, man, there were so many, I'm trying to think. There were so many bugs that happened, I'm trying to remember some more of them, but. <laughs> Did I think about dropping the game? Ask Travelor. Here's the thing, if this game were a low profile game, Okay, if this game... Oh, by the way, I'm going to mute this so you don't have to hear, listen to the uh, the PlayStation 5 dashboard. I'll mute that. Um, if this were a low-profile game, if this were a game that were made by not a AAA studio that everyone had high expectations for, if it didn't have eight years of hype, yeah, likely if I started playing it and it was a piece of shit, I would have dropped it, much like uh, Lords of the Fallen, right? That was a game. It was just completely unfinished, buggy as fuck, piece of garbage. After playing it for like maybe six, seven hours, I said, fuck this game, and I stopped playing it. But this game was so hyped... So, you know what I mean? So pushed as going to be one of the biggest games ever. I felt like it would have been a disservice for me to kind of stop playing it. You know, people wanted to see my full opinion on it. They wanted to see what I thought of the story, what the bugs that would happen. And let, let's, let's be honest here. <laughs> that game was not fun to play, but that game was probably fun to watch. To see the shit happening constantly and me telling you how bad the game was, seeing the bugs happen. Like, I bet that was a, a fucking ride to watch how bad that game was, you know? <laughs> Uh, Notorious PRB cheers. I'm in love with a girl in high school. How do I deal with this? I don't know what to tell you. I, it's nothing to do with what I'm doing on stream. Thanks for the cheer. Okay. <clears throat> so, yeah. I felt like it was it would have been a disservice to you guys if I just quit the game. People wanted to know my opinion on it. And quite frankly, as I told you guys, how would I have actually... How would I have fairly done a countdown of best or most disappointing games of a year if I didn't play them? Right? So... I was kind of obligated to finish it, even though I did not like the game. Ford Camaro says he does not feel that patches are going to fix the game. <laughs> Ipsilvin, no, I'm not putting Call of Duty to bed. I have fun playing it. Even though I yell at the game and I rage at it when the connections are bad, I overall have fun playing it or else I wouldn't play it. So, stop. Hammer time. Battleduck says I'm not refunding it. The story still gripped me on my playthrough from the beginning until the end, bugs and all. And there you go. If Some people are going to like it, and that's okay, man. You know, I, I actually told you, I like the ending of Cyberpunk. I thought that ending I got was good. I actually enjoyed the, how it panned out, and that you get to make this choice. Do you trust this corporation with put, making you an AI, or, or, you know, whatever they call it, scanning your consciousness into their server, or do you just live on your own terms and die early? You know, what are you going to do? I liked having that choice. I'm sure there would have been other cho ending choices if I had gone with the Pan Am route or whatever, and it would have been interesting. Uh, no, you cannot see me take down the Christmas decorations on camera. I'm taking them down tomorrow during my day off. Evil Ibrahim, if you ask me one more time when I'm playing Divinity, I'm going to permanently ban you from the chat. Because I've only answered it a million times. You're just doing it now to annoy me. So, time to wise up.
Pokemon Snap this year? Aren't they are they remaking Pokemon Snap as a modern game or something? I think I heard that they are like they're remaking it. If that's the case, maybe I would be interested in it because there's no other Pokemon game this year. So maybe I would be interested in it. Do I water the poinsettia? It's not real. It's fake. It looks real, but it's fake. It's a fake poinsettia plant. <laughs> it does look real, though. Hello, to Maniac Cop. How you doing? No, I'm never going to make a Snapchat, Alexander Rossi. I'm sorry to disappoint you. It's not going to happen. Baldur says in his ending, he stormed Arasaka Tower with the Nomads in a tank. Stole a tunnel. Uh, they had a tunnel boring machine. Oh, my God. So it's completely different. Let's see here. Stole a tunnel boring machine. Tunneled into the tower, blew it all to hell, and escaped into the Badlands and rode into the night. Wow. Huh. Well, if that's the case, I guess you didn't get any solution to the Johnny problem, right? <laughs> you basically just blow it up to say, fuck you, and then you, you don't get cured. Huh. <clears throat> Did the space ending creep me out? No. I thought it was interesting. It had like a sci-fi ending vibe, which was nice. <laughs> Fujibin says, my ending was the most interesting one in his opinion. So I haven't seen the other ones, but... Battle Duck 9000 says, in his ending, Johnny left with alt and he became an AI. Yeah, it's interesting. That whole alt plotline was a waste of time with certain endings, right? Like, it had nothing to do with my ending, so the whole thing was a waste of time. No, all the plants from years ago are dead. And Instagram says, those plants I bought three years ago. I bought these plants summer of 2017. I bought them actually when Kat was visiting once. And they just kind of all died over time. The spider plant I had to get rid of because the spider plant got infested with baby spiders. <laughs> I guess it's, that's a, is it ironic that it's called a spider plant and got infested with baby spiders? I don't know. Um, the snake plant was in the hallway out here. And sadly, the snake plant died because it didn't have enough light in the hallway. It needed more light than it was getting, and it just died out of no sunlight. Um, and I had another one. I forget what it was called. It was some kind of a tree, and that one, eventually, it was started, like, all the leaves started to fall off of it. And I think I could have, if I really wanted to, I probably could have rejuvenated it, but I just got rid of it. <laughs> so they're all gone. Eternal Napalm Cheers. If I ever see myself playing Cyberpunk 2077 again someday, like I, I said that in the, when I was when I was ending the playthrough, if somehow there's concrete evidence that they fixed it completely and it's actually a fully functional working game, if the PS5 version comes out and is actually much better than the PS4 version, and if they actually release these free DLCs that they claim, which I don't believe, I seriously don't believe they're coming out at this point because the company is such dire straits now because of the game being a piece of garbage that I don't see them pumping out free dlc seriously i could be wrong but you know it there would have to be a lot of circumstances <clears throat> kind of compiled to make me want to go back to that game and try to play it again uh joe schmo 2099 has subscribed to the channel thank you joe schmo for the sub i appreciate that very much what's my thoughts on sega astro city arcade cabinets uh I don't know if I've ever played on one. It sounds familiar, but I have no recollection if I ever played on one, so. <clears throat> Melody Zelda has resubscribed for 36 months. Thank you for three years of support, Melody Zelda. I appreciate that. Well, I try other guns in Call of Duty in future streams. Right now, I am. I'm using the Mac 10 and trying to unlock all the attachments for it. Um... If you, whenever, it seems like whenever you guys suggest a new weapon, eventually I try it, right? Because it, it does add to the variety of the game. And, you know, I think the AUG is probably the best... <coughs> excuse me, the AUG is probably the best assault rifle that I've tried. Um, that doesn't mean I wouldn't try another one if someone suggested something. But, see, a lot of people scream, try a sniper rifle. Like, I, first of all, I don't want to play the game as a sniper, you know? there's certain. I think there's been certain Call of Duties where I've enjoyed that. I don't think I would enjoy it in this one. And... Sniping is only really effective if you're using things like quick scoping and shit, which I'm not going to do. So I'm probably just going to hate it, hate it. All right, but I might change weapons if people suggested it. Furious Kirk just cheers. I was playing and watching some of your old playthroughs of Chronicles of Riddick. I can't find a final video. Was that playthrough you didn't continue? Those two games are considered cult classics with the first movie. I don't remember. That's so long ago. I have no clue. I would think I finished it. If you can't find the video, it probably got taken down for copyright, like many of my videos over the years. 
you might not realize this, you know, putting videos on YouTube for 12 years, many of my playthroughs over the years are incomplete because YouTube copyright struck the videos and just took them down. So, nothing I could do about that. Likely, probably the ending had music in the credits and they matched it and fall blocked in every country and now you can't watch the ending. That would be my guess. <clears throat> Kate cheered and says, what's your most anticipated game of the year? And happy Taco Monday. For me, the two big games this year, God of War 2 comes out. That would be amazing. And uh, the Hor Horizon, the new Horizon game. Those are the two big ones for me this year. I'm sure there will be many more games, but those are the two that, in my mind, I'm thinking these are going to be great PS5 playthroughs, and I can't wait for them. <clears throat> so there you go. <clears throat> Excuse me. Elden Ring is not coming out this year. I don't know why people are like, oh, Elden Ring. Elden, we haven't seen a piece of information about Elden Ring. What the fuck makes you think it's coming out this year? You're out of your mind. <laughs> no way. <clears throat> no, I will not watch the Super Bowl this year, just like I don't watch the Super Bowl any year. I don't care. How's my overall health? Oh, I'm dying. Of course. <laughs> I, I mean, how's my overall health? I don't know. I'm alright. I'm certainly, you know, the ear infections are the big thing for me. <clears throat> I'm going to see an ear, nose, and throat doctor in a, in a few weeks here. So hopefully that'll help. No, I do not watch the puppy bowl either. Go to the doctor? You mean like I just said I am? God, people are fucking so stupid. God. <laughs> Haseo the fifth form. Haseo fifth form cheered and said, Will you be checking back for Blood and Werewolf Apocalypse? The werewolf sounds interesting to me. I don't recall any werewolf game other than Order 1886. I don't know if, if Werewolf Apocalypse is going to be any good. Back for Blood, I'm down for. That's the same people who made Left 4 Dead 1 and 2. And then they made that fucking really shitty... Uh, monster game. I can't remember what it was called. Anyone remember? 20, it came out in 2016. I know that because I made a video for it for my edited video channel, KO Gaming. I can't remember what the fuck it was called now. Um, But yeah. Evolve, that's what it was called. Yep, yeah, that game sucked ass. Um, So, yeah, that team went off to do their own game and they went back to basically making Left 4 Dead again. I really like Left 4 Dead 1 and 2, so I feel it'll probably be really good. I hope. I guess we'll see. Leg Slap of Doom. As for Werewolf Apocalypse, I don't know if I'm playing it or not. I don't know much about it. It doesn't seem very good to me, though. Leg Slap of Doom cheers said, If you want Call of Duty War Gun tips, more than happy to tell you what I use. My top of the MP5, the Krig, AK-47, uh, AK I U I U the AK-47, and the Groza. All right? I don't know what, you know, if you tell me that what I'm playing versus now. <laughs> you know? What's the last console game I played off stream? I have no idea. I don't play games off stream. I do not play video games off stream. I have not since I started doing this for a living, all right, which was early 2010, so 11 years ago now. Um, the only games I played off stream were games with like, like yours. Well, you can't see it actually. On the screen right now is Demon Souls. The fuck is my mouse? There it is. Oh, hold on. Demon Souls. Demon's Souls, when I played it originally, I grinded off camera. So technically, I guess you could say, oh, he played a console game off stream. I grinded that game off camera um, to level up so that I could go back and I could advance in it and not have a bunch of difficulty. So there was that. I think, I want to say, what other games did I grind? Blue Dragon. I grinded off stream, I believe. Um, or not. I'm trying to remember. Some RPGs back in the day, I used to do that. I would grind and do repetitive fighting off stream. So when I came back, I'd be like leveled. And I could just turbo through for that stream. Um, but I haven't done that in a million years. I, I have a life. So, you know, I'm just being honest. I have a life outside of me streaming games, uh, you know, at least five to six hours of gameplay a day. Plus the other time I'm here talking with you guys in the office. I don't want to play games outside of this office. That's enough games for me. <laughs> Seriously. I want to do anything but play video games when I'm outside of this office. <clears throat> but that's the cool thing is, what I like to do for fun is also my job. So I'm having fun, with the exception of Cyberpunk, I'm having fun playing games when I'm on stream with you guys. So when I'm outside of here, now I'm going to have fun other ways. I don't want to sit here and play more games. I want to have fun in other ways that, you know, whatever possible. So... 
Yes, I still practice kung fu every day. Absolutely. You know, you can't let it leave you. You know. Lake Slab of Doom Cherry says, "I help. What helps in Cold War? I learned you can change colorblind settings to help you see enemy tags better. For example, you can set it to green, red, and you can change your teammate's name color tag to see them better. Huh? Maybe that would help." Haseo says, isn't there a Gollum game coming out this year? I have no idea. I think at one point there was a Gollum game being developed, but I don't have a clue about when it's coming out or anything like that. <laughs> I'm taking down my Christmas decorations tomorrow during my day off. Because now the holidays are obviously officially over. Um, and so they got to come down. And as of Wednesday when I come back, it'll just be the office backdrop. Timbo Slice Cheery says, I need to know it's been bothering me all Christmas season. That tall thing behind you, is it round or is it flat? The white and red tower thing. It's a tree. It's a tree. What did you think it was? Three D for those with three D glasses on right now. Here you go. Some three D excitement. <laughs> there you go. It's a treat. What did you think it was? Now it's not going to sit flat. Oh my god. <laughs> now look what I did. Well, good thing it only has to stay there for, for one more stream tonight. Because it's about to fall. Watch, I'm going to be playing Assassin's Creed tonight. It's going to fall on my head. Because I did that. Um, <clears throat> Let's see here. OFB Terminator. Cheers. Are you embarrassed for your immature behavior and rage you displayed on your Need for Speed Payback playthrough? Yes, I'm heartily, overwhelmingly embarrassed by my behavior during Need for Speed. How did you know? Uh, Timbo Slice Cheers says, are you decorating the office for Derek's birthday? No. And I can't close, close up to say that because this is the close-up camera, so I can't zoom in and say no. Sorry. Timbo Slice Cheers says, growing up, my mother had a plastic type thing that looked like that but was not a tree. I'm sorry. Well, this is a tree. And Zebra Cheers, any days planned for year-end series now that you finish Cyberpunk? No, because I still have to finish Yakuza 7. I still have to finish uh, Assassin's Creed. I have to finish those games because they're going to factor in. They're definitely going to factor into my rankings. And without finishing them, how can I rank them, right? So I need to keep... That's why I said, now the Cyberpunk's done. You're going to see Assassin's Creed and Yakuza as the main gameplay streams for the next couple of weeks. We're going to have Immortals Phoenix Rising as only one mainstream. Then it's going to go to Night Streams. And so we're going to try to make major progress in those two games. And the Night Streams will be Immortals and Call of Duty and a little bit of Street Fighter. Okay? <clears throat> there you go. Sackboy, no. I'm not playing Sackboy until it goes on some kind of a big discount, which apparently it's still not, so I'm not playing it. Screw it. <sighs> is this Yakuza my favorite one? That's an interesting question, She Wolf. I certainly really like it because it's, it's like the cool plot line you expect from Yakuza. Dramatic, interesting, involved, complex, right? Good character development like you usually get in Yakuza. The cool cultural stuff of, of Japan, right? And... It's a JRPG, which I love JRPGs. So it's like the gameplay I love, plus all the awesome positive things about Yakuza. So it may be. Again, I can't say that till I finish it, but it very well may be my favorite Yakuza game. We'll see. <clears throat> Thoughts on the Keebler Elves? They're cute little, little guys, and man, do they make delicious cookies. Do I have plans for visiting Turkey next week? I'm not streaming next week. I'll be in Turkey all week, guys. <clears throat> Eternal Napalm Cheese, do you think mobile gaming affected console PC gaming in a positive or negative way? The only way that I'm seeing it really affect stuff is with trying to emulate the way that mobile games make money, which is repeated microtransactions. And we have a lot of console games these days. Let's say every sports game has ultimate team pack openings. Overwatch with opening loot boxes to get, you know, the, these, these skins... Um, how many games buy, microtransaction to buy advancement in the game, buy currency in the game? That came directly from mobile games. Seriously, that was not in console games until mobile gaming. Outside of that, it's interesting to see because you got certain games like Genshin Impact that's free on console 
and really is a full-fledged console game, but it's also a mobile game, right? So, yeah, there's definitely big influence these days on console games uh, from mobile games, for sure, because mobile games are a ginormously profitable industry. Licks love a Doom Chaser. So what direction, in your own opinion, do you think Nintendo should go in their next-gen consoles? I don't know. All I, all I want them to do is take it seriously and not be like, oh, we made another children's toy that isn't competing with Nintendo or Sony. No, they directly are always competing with Nintendo and Sony. They just don't want to admit it because, sadly, their consoles are never powerful enough and don't have the features of Nintendo and Sony consoles. If they did that, imagine if, if, if Nintendo made an actual next-gen console with with mind-blazing black graphics and all their first-party games looked amazing and sick on there. That would be amazing. They're never going to do that, though. I would love that, but they're never going to do that. So, uh, Zap Craig has subscribed to the channel for three months. Thank you, Zap Craig, for the sub. Timbo Slice Cheers said, I downloaded Man Eater. It's pretty interesting. Not a deep game, but you go around eating things as a shark, and it's satisfying. That's why I think playing it free for free on PS Plus is the way to go and not actually paying for it. Um, all right, guys, about 15 more minutes of Q&A. Thanks for hanging out with me here. How can you prove to the, your friends the world is flat? <laughs> I don't know. Get them really drunk? Hello, beautiful butterfly. Am I ever playing Samurai Showdown? Why on earth would I play a two-year-old fighting game that no one really plays? <laughs> Why would I do that? No, I don't think so. Do I think I'll hit the tips goal today? Well, let's see. 15 minutes left on the stream. I'm at $32 out of 100. No, I don't think I'm hitting the tips goal on this stream today. It's a shame. I would have liked that for the conclusion of Cyberpunk, but I guess the game's so bad, no one cared to uh, to come by and contribute for it. <laughs> In Star Rune Cheer, he says, do you think Nintendo will improve after Miyamoto dies? Seems like he's dragging them down. You know, you never know. Uh, obviously, no one wants Miyamoto to pass away. Miyamoto definitely has pull in the company, but is he really the director of everything? I doubt it. Um, you know, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see what happens. Maybe, maybe what it is is you have an old guard attitude. They have this old school mentality of game development, console development, and maybe when you get new, fresh faces into those roles of, of power... Maybe we will see Nintendo completely change their attitude and be a different kind of game developer and console developer. But I don't know. We, you know, it remains to be seen. Maybe not. Maybe it's just a cultural thing and it'll never change. I don't know. Lake Slab of Dooms is the everything in the future, knowing all the circumstances Project Red is in, they'll ever recover and make another game? I don't know. I really don't know. It's sad. It's sad that a game developer that was literally, after Witcher 3 came out, they were propelled to the status of, like, those who can do no wrong, you know? At one point, it was, like, Naughty Dog, Bethesda, CD Project Red, uh, BioWare, right? You had these companies that were, like, they could do no wrong. Whatever they pump out is gold, and you know when you spend your money on a game from that company that it's going to be absolutely great. And then what happened? Bethesda puts out Fallout 76. Bioware puts out fucking uh, Massacrect, Massacrect, Mass Effect, and uh, Andromeda, and then Anthem. Um, you know, it's like there are no more. There are no more game companies that you can just trust. They just don't exist anymore. You have no idea. It's always a crapshoot now when you're going to buy a game. <laughs> it really is. Any interest in the Mass Effect Remaster Collection? Yes, I would like to replay Mass Effect 1 and Mass Effect 3. In the remaster collection. I just played two last year. It's, this always happens to me. After years of wanting to play a game that I never got around to playing, I play it, the original version, and then it gets remastered. I never played Spyro the Dragon at all. Never. Never. People were all... Play Spyro. You're going to like Spyro. I finally play Spyro 1. Fucking remaster collection comes out one year after. Crash Bandicoot. Oh, you're, we want to see you play the original Crashes. This is going to be amazing. I played Crash Bandicoot 1 and 2, the originals. Fucking remaster collection comes out the next year. Mass Effect. Haven't replayed any of them in a million years. 
People finally, we free play Mass Effect 2 for downtime in 20, uh, 2020 because there's nothing going on. Sure I will. I replay it. Fucking remaster collection comes out. It never fails. The shit never fails. So I definitely want to play 3 because I never replayed 3 at all. And I, I think I want to replay 1 again, but I'm not going to replay 2. I just played it. So... That's true. Same thing with Dark Souls Remaster. He's, he's right. I played two runs. If I remember, two different runs of Dark Souls. And then immediately Dark Souls Remastered came out. Huh. <sighs> well, you see, that's the thing. Is that, was that Arch Tekken who said that? So I think it was Arch Tekken who just said, well, why is it that you rely on AAA studios to think a game is good? There's a ton of new in there indie studios out there. Well, you just said it because there's a ton. There's a ton of indie studios. And when you're going to a game, you're looking for a game that's going to be big budget production values, great to stream because it's really awesome gameplay and, and interesting plot and mainstream stuff that everyone's going to bring to the table to, 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 to enjoy. You look to a AAA studio. I'm not saying that indie companies don't make great games. They absolutely have. In the recent years, they're getting better and better at it. But you have so many indie companies trying to compete for market share, it's hard to even make noise and get your game seen. Among Us was out for two years before it blew up. Two fucking years that game existed, and no one cared. And then all of a sudden, a streamer plays it, and the game blows up, and now they're insanely popular, and they made ridiculous amounts of money. You see what I'm saying? Um, it's a different thing. You, you would hope that... That game coming from the AAA company is going to be the surefire hit that everyone wants to play and see. And these days, you just can't depend on that anymore. It's funny, because I'd say the first seven, eight years that I was doing this, you could. Absolutely. Every game out of a major studio, you could trust to be good. And not anymore. Now it's like a crapshoot. Lick Slab of Doom cheered again. He said, what's the hardest game you ever played where you wanted to slap legs really hard? The original Ninja Gaiden. To this day, I have not beaten it. I can cheat to beat it, but I don't want to. I can get to the last stage. I can get to the final boss, but you have to do it all on one life, and I can't do it. I still haven't beaten it. Maybe one day I'll go back and try to do it again, but I couldn't do it when I tried years ago. Ninstar Rune Cheer, said, Golden Age of Gaming. Uh, the Golden Age of Gaming for me was the early to mid-90s. The Genesis versus Super Nintendo era, and then when the PlayStation came out. Like, that was like, oh my God, because it was like, Constant competition. Games were always competing to try to be better than each other. The graphics were constantly being blown to bits. So you know what I mean? Like, oh my god. Look at games from the early Genesis and early SNES era and compare that to, like, the end of their life cycles. Or compare that to, say, you know, Nintendo 64 or PlayStation 1. You see what I mean? Like, that was an era where, like, things were nuts. And you could go to a game rental store and rent a ridiculous amount of games for cheap. It was a great time. It was a really great time. Uh... Seraph Lull did a hundred bit cheers. Are you going to play Ruin King? What is that? I don't even know what that. What is Ruin King? Critical Red cheered. and said, "Would you ever replay Marvel Ultimate Alliance one or two? I remember watching your playthrough of the second one, where you literally were jugging out for the whole walkthrough. Um, yeah, well, those games are great for co-op. All right, and in reality, I feel that the co-op gameplay of those games carries them and makes them entertaining to play and watch. Playing those games by themselves, and eh, they're not so great. In particular." Like, Marvel, Marvel Ultimate Alliance 1, I played a lot online with people when it was new. And then after that, you know, I kind of lost interest because after doing a few runs co-op and you've seen all the characters, you unlock everyone. Like, Magneto is, like, the best character in that game. He's ridiculous. Um, you know, I, I don't think that it would be entertaining to see me play those games again. I just don't. I think it would be boring. <clears throat> when is Lost Odyssey happening? I would love to play it, but... Because of viewer's choice, the next game that's an RPG that has to be played when you choose the 7 ends has to be Divinity Original Sin 2. So once Divinity Original Sin 2 completes, then I can finally consider doing another RPG. But I have to wait. And who knows, that game's probably insanely long, and we're stuck with it because people voted for it. Isn't that nice? Uh, Nose Vacuum Cheer said, if you want to beat Ninja Gaiden, you have to train your thumbs. Show me your thumbs. Is that a quote from The Wizard? I think so. <laughs> Can I give the camera a hug? No. <clears throat> Am I ever going to blow bubbles again? 
No. Do I think I'll ever have friends again? No. Will I ever play Middle Gear Solid again? No. Would I consider a Silvano thumbs up for a $50 tip score one day? No. I missed Napalm's cheer? No. Oh, wait, did I? He did. He says, I have 100% faith in From Software to deliver. Having played all Soulsborne games multiple times, which particular boss instills fear in you just thinking of fighting it? Um, Out of all the, the Soulsborne games? Uh, to this day, Bed of Chaos is still the most annoying boss because it's random. Like You could go right in there and just die instantly. There's nothing you can do about it. Um, and I would say in, in Sekiro, definitely... Uh, the stupid, the, 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 the fucking great, great guardian ape or whatever. That was just a pain in the dick. It was just a stupid pain in the dick boss. Lick Slab of Doom Cheer says, everything you say no, I think about Daniel Bryan and say yes, yes, yes. No, no, no. Spartan Kings Cheer says, do you think I'll ever stop saying no? No. In Star Rune Cheer says, was Cthulhu mathematically impossible or were players shitters? No. Okay. Will I ever make a no emote? No. Wasn't Lost Odyssey the game that made me start YouTubing or something? No. The Lost Odyssey was a really great uh, RPG, but it had some really tough super bosses. There's, I, If I remember correctly, there's two hidden super bosses, and one of them I could not beat. And so I went to YouTube to watch someone else beat it. And the only way they could beat it, I'm not kidding, was like a 45-minute marathon. And they had way, they had grinded way more than me and had way higher stats than me. And it took them like a ton of time to beat the thing. So I tried to copy what they did, and I couldn't beat it. But the story goes that when I was watching this video, uh, there was no commentary on it. It was just raw gameplay of the guy trying to beat the boss. And so you're watching it, trying to figure out, like, what is he doing? What's his methodology of why he's doing what he's doing? It's confusing. Because there's no one talking over it. And I said, man, it would be better if there were videos where people would talk over them so you actually understand what's going on in the game or what they're thinking at the time or whatever. And honestly, that's one of the things that later on, a few months later, I decided to try to do that kind of video. Live commentary over gameplay. So. Lex Love of Doom Chute says, here's a yes question. Will you stream later? No. Well, yes, I will stream later. I'm going to be streaming Assassin's Creed Valhalla later tonight. Okay. Can you nominate a puzzle game for viewer's choice? Like, here's the thing. Puzzle games, like, it would depend, I guess, on what kind. If it's just, like, Tetris, I mean, that's not going to be a playthrough. You know what I mean? The whole point of viewer's choice is to get a game that's actually going to be, like, a playthrough for stream that'll have some longevity to it. So I guess it would depend. If there's a puzzle game that has a story and actually has longevity, I guess it would be eligible then. But I don't know. I don't know much about puzzle games, honestly. Yes, I am still interested in playing Miss Sequel Riven Polish Frog. Absolutely. I never got around to it last year. I would definitely be interested in playing it at some point for downtime gaming. Yes. Catherine, no. I told you guys I hated Catherine the first time I played it. I, 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 well, I was interested because it was the first anime-ish game I had ever played. So the anime plot line, the cutscenes, the visuals, the, and, the, and, and the, 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 the story itself was intriguing. I hated the puzzle game, but I really detested the gameplay of that game, and I don't ever want to play it again. There you go. All right, guys, last chance. Only two minutes left. Retro Jim cheered, and he said, you think Lost Odyssey could be a playthrough in 2021? I don't know, because from what people are saying, they're literally telling me that, like, Divinity Original Sin is a 100-hour required game to beat it. And you know I can't play it as the mainstream all the time, so it's probably going to take me seven months to beat, and then it's the hardcore gaming season, so I have no idea. I would like to play Lost Odyssey this year, but I can't promise it, because we got to play origin Divinity Original Sin first. Leg Slap of Doom cheered again. He says, before you go, I hope you, Cat and Jasper have a great year with Leg Slaps and here and take care, buddy. Thank you, Leg Slap of Doom. That was a nice message. Yeah, that's true. Camaro says, I learned this about 
streaming that some games are good to pl are good to play, but they're not fun for a streaming audience. You're right. You're absolutely right. I know. I know that from experience. What do I have in the back of my neck here? It's a pimple. It's annoying as fuck. There's a very annoying pimple right here. It's, it's yo, know, and I go, God damn, it hurts. Fuck, man. I hate that. I hate when I get a pimple, you know, in the back of my head or whatever. And now it's like, oh god, it hurts so fucking bad. It's so annoying. It's disgusting. Thanks for asking, though, Carmen. Appreciate the cheer. Okay. All right, guys. I guess that's it. Thanks for those who hung out with me watching Cyberpunk. Thanks for those who just watched this impromptu video. Uh, this right here sucks. But I guess that's what happens when I fucking, you know, when I, I waste so much time on Cyberpunk. Hopefully the, the new game's coming out. People will like it a lot more. Okay? All right, guys. Thank you.